Almighty God, I pray right now that you would give the wind a mighty voice. Touch this frail lump of feeble mortal clay and fulfill your word again tonight, we pray in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. Amen. So on the last time we were together, we talk about L-O-M-L, love of my life. And we, we, we talk about the, the struggle we have in terms of the conflict between our devotion and our vocation. The, the job we do and the need we have to relate to a higher power. We have this, this need to, to be prosperous, a desire to be successful. We, we have, every one of us have it, this quest for material stuff. We want to make sure our families are okay. We want to make sure, but in the midst of all of this, our hearts, our lives can survive without connection with the living God. And so we talk a little bit about Mary and how she found this love of her life that, that moved her to the point where she, she saved up one whole year's wage to buy what the song called an alabaster box, a special ointment. And she walked in the room and she, she washed his feet with her tears and dried them with her hair and, and anoint her feet and Jesus said she did this for my burial what love and the song says you don't know the cost of my praise and Mary made Jesus the love of her life the subject was the topic rather was l-o-m-l -L. the subject had to do with with making Christ the love of your life uh, that devotion to God that you wouldn't give to anybody else. This relationship with God that ought to be the guiding principle in your life. The guiding force in your life. Tonight I'm using uh, most of the same letters but I changed one. So on Wednesday night we spoke about love of my life. Tonight I want to talk about love of his life. Love of his life. I read a statement that I, it's on your screen and it struck me and I want to share it with you. Never make someone a priority for whom you are just an option. I'm going to read it again. Never make someone a priority when for that someone you are just an option. There are many persons who give their whole life in love. They, 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 they bank their total emotion. They bank all their love on one person and never get love in return. They, they, have, have you ever made someone your priority and just to discover you don't mean anything to that person apart from what they can get from you? Hmm? It says, never make someone a, your priority for whom you are in your love. Let, let, let me say it this way. The statement is saying, if you are going to make someone your number one priority, you ought to make sure you mean something to that someone. Are you listening to me? Never make someone a priority when for that person, you are just another option. They'll just move on and leave you with a broken heart. Huh? I, 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 I have somebody uh, wrote me and tell me, uh, don't use those songs. But you know, songs are good social commentaries. Jesus used parables and stuff that were common to people to help them understand the power of the word. Huh? So, we're going to talk about the love of his life. If I were to ask you, of all the planets in our solar system, which one do you think is God's priority? When you look at the planets, when you look at our solar system, which of the planet do you think is God's priority? Well, I love to allow the Bible to speak. 
In Jeremiah 22 and verse 9, I get my answer. What does it say? Look at it. Look at it. It may be the only text in your Bible with earth being repeated three times, one behind the other. Earth. Oh, earth. Earth. Hear the word of the Lord. You should underline that in your Bible. Oh, earth. Can I paint a picture of your mind of a holy God, the sovereign creator? He made this vast universe, but he stands now on the pinnacle of the universe. And as if he's screaming his heart of love out to a planet in rebellion on the first night of this campaign, I said to you, God, from Isaiah chapter 1 said, I have brought up a nourished people, but they have rebelled against me. Here is the living God, the one who made the world in six days. This is the sovereign God, the sovereign creator. Greeks call him the prime mover. He's history's prime mover. He's the prime cause of everything. He said, oh, earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord and the Bible speaks of of the written word and the living word the Bible said the written word came not by the will of man but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost the Bible also speaks to Je of Jesus as the living word you find that in st. John chapter 1 in beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God and later on down in the chapter it said the word was made flesh and dwelt among us so God is calling this rebellious recalcitrant and stubborn planet a planet laden with iniquity he said hear the word of the Lord hear the written word and hear the living word now we say the earth is his priority well let me ask you down on this earth we have flowers and we have bees and we have birds and we have trees we have the fish we have the alligator we have the shark which of the creation which of these creatures do you think is the object of god's love which of all the creatures down here which one do you think is god's number one priority now before you answer me somebody said it's she pointed herself but she said she is before you answer me let, let let me say this to you god is concerned about the environment because he knows if our environment is polluted then our world can survive and you know right now we live in a toxic world the very air we breathe is polluted that's why this world as it is can't last so much longer the water is polluted the air is polluted some food polluted there's pollution everywhere all around us sometimes it's man-made we build factories and they are exuding uh, poisonous toxic substances we sometimes pour the stuff out in the water system and so folks sometimes can't even find good drinking water because there's pollution everywhere god is concerned about our environment but beloved in the midst of all of this, I am happy, ladies and gentlemen, just to tell you that humankind, mankind, is God's priority. Why do I say that? Where do I find that? Psalms 8 and verse 4. The text says, What is man that thou art mindful of him? What a, what a statement. What is man that he occupies your mind, God? What is man that you are mindful of him? Can I tell you something? My great-grandmother died at 99 years old. I would love, I always love to run my hand. She had long flowing silver hair. Her body was showing signs of age now, losing its nice contours and stuff. But I love grandma anyhow. Are you listening to me? And I'd run home, every one busy though I am. I'd get home sometimes, minutes to 11. I'll wake her up. I said, girl, are you okay? I'll run my hand through her silver hair. One day I went and she said, boy, I don't have long left here, but I've got you on my mind. I've got you on my mind. Didn't know quite what that meant. 
until after she died, I discover the little piece of land has my name on it. Are you listening to me? She wrote a note. So when she said, boy, I have you on my mind. I didn't know what she was doing, but she placed me on the wheel. Can I tell you, God has you on his will. And the will was signed with a red ink called the blood of Jesus written. Ah, uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself tonight. What is man that thou art mindful of him? And the son of man that you visit him. The next verse said, for you made him a little lower than the angels. Can, can, can you understand this? I've never seen an angel, but I read the Bible. And one night, one angel, one angel wiped out 185,000 Syrian soldiers. One angel. And here the Bible said, God, when you made man, you made him a little lower than the angel. You crowned him with glory and honor. You made him to have dominion over the works of your hands. You put all things under his feet. All the sheep, all the oxen, all the fish, all the beasts of the field, and the birds and the fowls. Are you listening to me? This is what the word of God says. That God made mankind his number one priority of all the things down here and you want to understand beloved you go to the creation week and you find that in clear language God in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth the sea and all that in them is he made everything and I wish I had time to walk you through that and the, there's a recurring phrase with a particular Hebrew word which is only used to mean a 24 hour period and the evening and the morning were the first day. And the Bible said, let the earth bring forth. He said, let there be light. And the sun appeared. He called the stars into existence. He said, let the waters bring forth. But now he got down to day number six. What day? Day number six. He got down to day number six. I want to go to Genesis chapter one. I, I have to read this for, for my, I want to read it from my own Bible. Now, the guys can follow me in the screen, but, but, but I'm reading from my own Bible. Are you listening to me? Genesis chapter one. And the Bible said, and God said, verse 26, let us make man in our image after our likeness and then now pause for the cause genesis 1 26 and god said let us make man in our own likeness the hebrew uses a plural name for god right here father son and holy ghost in unison he could have said let man appear just like he said, let the plants appear. He said, let there be light on this powerful sun. So powerful that if you get too close to it, it'll, it will liquidate you. Are you listening to me? But God, though he called the sun into existence, when it came to his number one priority, he scooped down in his divine power. He made this mound of clay. He formed the hands. He formed the head. He formed the feet and then God bent over and in mouth to mouth divine resuscitation. The Bible said he breathed into man the breath of life and man became, man became, I said man became a living being. This awesome God who could have said let there be man but to prove to you that you are his number one priority he called Pluto and Mars and Saturn and Jupiter he called billions of galaxies that the Kobe telescope when, when it goes up in space in 1999 it says that the universe has a definite beginning it blew the mind of man yet this awesome God did not say let there be man but he formed man with his own hand from the dust of the ground breathe in his nostrils the breath of life and man became you are God's priority 
Sometimes you may be struggling to make ends meet, but you are God's priority. Are you listening to me? You are God's priority. Let us make man in our own likeness, in our own image. I don't want to make him like the monkey or the donkey. I don't want to make him like the birds or the bees. I want to make him with a mind to think. I want to give him intelligence. I want to put in him so that, so that when God was through and he brought the animals to Adam to see what Adam would call them because the mind of Adam was wired to the mind of God. The Bible said the same names that God had in mind or the same names that Adam gave. I'm glad tonight that the Bible gives us a picture of what man looked like before sin came in. God made mankind and before sin came, man behaved like his creator. He thought like the creator. God placed in you and even though sin has come, we are told by science that the wisest of us have not used more than just 10% of the capacity of our brain power. Awesome God, sovereign creator, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, in creation he's my creator. And when sin messes me up, down from his glory, the ever living story, my God, my savior came and Jesus was his name, born in a manger because you are his priority. You're his priority. Now, now to help you understand how important you are to God. I told you earlier, God has a concern for the universe. And the Bible, in the first chapter, gives us the rhythm of creation. Have you ever wondered why it is that no matter where around the world you live, the day has 24 hours? Have you ever wondered that no matter where around the world you live, the week has seven days. Have you ever wondered that down through millenniums of history, black man, white man, Indian, Jew, we have seven days to our week. God sets the boundary of time. And so you get a Genesis 2 and verse 1. He comes now to the end of the stuff he's making. But he would make one other thing. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the hosts of them. And on the seventh day, we're going to go verse 2. And on the seventh day, God ended his work. It means by the seventh day had come, he had ended all his work. Now, now here's something mysterious. And the Bible said, and he rested. Do you think that God was tired? God can't be tired. Huh? He can't. He's divine. He's got life unborrowed and underived. Huh? The Bible said he rested. The Bible said, number two, he blessed. He sanctified. Then he said, he blessed the seventh day. Now, I want to pause and, and, and ask you to walk with me. Number one, you are agreeing with me that he can't be tired. So if he rested, it must therefore be that he was setting an example for the world to follow. He rested on the seventh day. Uh, uh, the Bible said also he sanctified it. Now a non-deep understanding of the word sanctify means to make it special, to set it off, to mark it off for a unique purpose. Mm -hmm. And then the Bible said he, he blessed it. Now only God can bless. And what God bless? I, I heard somebody said, who, who, whom God bless? No man can curse, huh? When God bless you, you you're blessed. So, so here it is now. I told you in the first week of our sojourn in footprints that the devil had another name. He was the light bearer. That's what the name Lucifer meant. I told you in the first week of our togetherness 
that the devil wanted to be like God. He wanted the place of God. He wanted to be worshipped. I told you earlier in this week that God is sending one last message to earth in these last days and it's called the everlasting gospel. I told you that the first message in the gospel says, fear God and give glory to him for the hour of his judgment is come. Then the text says, worship him who made the heavens and the earth. Now right here, right here, you find the significant difference between the true God and the rest. The true God is the one who made the world in six days. The true God is the sovereign creator. The true God is the one who made Adam and Eve in his own likeness. The true God is the one who blessed the seventh day. He calls it the Sabbath day. Are you listening to me? Now, now here's something that, that you ought not to miss. The Sabbath is not a conflict over a day. The Sabbath is God's establishment of a memorial of his creatorship. It's a sign, a symbol of loyalty, of allegiance to God. So he set it aside and the Bible said by the time he finished, everything was done. He didn't make the Sabbath out of stone. He didn't make it out of a planet because to keep it, it means I would have to fly to that planet. But he made it out of something that the Indians have and the Negro men have and the black men have and the white men have and the tall man like me have it and the short one like you have the same thing. He made it out of T-I-M-E. He gives all of us the same 24 hours to our day. He gives all of us the same seven days to our week. Are you listening to me? And so he, he blessed this Sabbath day and he made it holy. The devil tried to obliterate that. So somebody said, but pastor, I've heard that the Sabbath is for Jews. They, they were God's people, but the Sabbath is for Jews. Can I talk with you? The first Jew was Abraham. Abraham was born... 2,500 years after God made the Sabbath. 2,500 years after God made the Sabbath. Now, there are 52 weeks in each year. You want to know how many Sabbaths the world had before the first Jew came? 52 times 2,500 is 130,000. So the earth had 130,000 Sabbath before the first Jew came. The Bible said the Sabbath was made for M-A-N. Black man, white man, tall man, short man. The Sabbath was made for M. -A -N. A N Canadian man, European man, Jamaican man, Chinese man. The Sabbath was made for M A N because M A N is God's priority. The Sabbath was made for M A N, and that's why God is calling to M A N. Hear ye. The written word and the living word. Are you listening to me? Now I want to run. I have some stuff to share with you from the screen. I may not get to all of it. But, but I, I think I want to go there. So that we can at least get some stuff together. I'm going to run fast. So as soon as they can get me hooked up. I will be ready to run. But, but so while they are getting me hooked up on that. The Bible declares. Uh, holy. Holy. This is the last book. Holy. Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, who was 
and is and is to come. David said, if I take the wings of the morning and fly to the uttermost part of the earth, even there I'll find you. He was, he is, and he is to come. Past, present, and future. And that's why you don't have to worry about your past. Because God knows that. When he calls you, if you give God your today, he will take care of all of your tomorrow. Are you listening to me? When you confess your sins to God, when you surrender your life to God, he cleanses, he forgives all your transgressions, he covers you in his own righteousness, and he sanctifies you. That word means he's giving you power, he is setting you aside, he's holding you up, he's guiding your life. Are you listening to me? And bless the Lord God. Someday the silver cord will break. Someday the earth as it is will not last forever. Someday there'll be no sickness, no shame, no sin. Someday the sky shall roll asunder. Someday he that shall come will come. Text says, holy, 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 Lord God Almighty. You are worthy, O oh Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. Why? You are worthy to receive glory and honor and power. Why? For you created all things. Are you listening to me? And by your will, they exist and were created. This is the difference between the true God and all the rest. The true God is sovereign creator. And the, the, the true God knows that the devil always want to be God. Why, what did Satan say to Jesus? He said, if you are the son of God, command these stones to be made bread. He said, if you worship me, I'll give you all the kingdoms of this world. And Jesus said, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God and him only shalt thou serve. God knows that the devil is always trying to, to replace him, God. Now, but understand, beloved, that God has made you his priority. And therefore, you ought to make God your priority. Are you listening to me? He's made you his number one priority. It is because of him. It is by him. It is through him. It is by him all things were created. Are you listening to me? And down in the last book, him who lives forever and ever, who created from Genesis to Revelation. The Bible is underlining this truth that God is sovereign creator. You know why it's important? All of us, we're looking for prosperity. We're looking for peace of mind. We're looking, we want to be comfortable in this life. We want a place where we can be okay. But some, every now and then, circumstances reduces our life to nothing. I want to tell you, if the devil, even if it is with your complicity, reduce your life to nothing, the best place to be is in the hands of the God who made the world from nothing. Oh, I, I hear a song that says, Something beautiful, something good, All my confusion he understood. All I had to offer him was brokenness and sin, But he made something beautiful of my life. You want to say amen? This sovereign God can make something beautiful of your life. No matter what sin has done to you, broken up, messed up, the best place to be. And tonight, if you hear the voice of God, surrender your life to the sovereign creator. The Bible said he lives forever and ever. And I want to run past this. You know about Darwin stuff. I won't go there tonight. But here's what I started with last week. The everlasting gospel. The everlasting gospel. It goes way back to the creation. It goes back to this God who made man in his likeness. And though sin is threatening to deface and erase the image of God. God sent Jesus. He sent his son to recreate us by redemption. Are you listening to me? 
and he asks us to worship him who made the heavens and the earth. I'm running fast tonight. Let us make man. I went through that. God made mankind and he finished all his creation and he blessed the seventh day. He made it the Sabbath day. And I'm running to something to tell you now. The devil doesn't want us to have a relationship with God. The seventh day was blessed by God, sanctified by God. He rested on it. He made it sanctified. And when he's leading Israel out of Egypt, 400 plus years, working hard, morning till night, Pharaoh made them slave after Joseph died. But Joseph died with a hope. Joseph said to his brothers, you're going to be enslaved, but the Lord God will visit you. And when God visits you, don't leave my bones down here. Carry my bones up with you. What a living faith. He said, I'm going to die. You're going to be here for a long time, but don't worry. God shall visit you. He's leading them out of Egypt leading them and they got into the wilderness they never had any water listen to me carefully the only God who can bring water from a dry rock is the sovereign creator and sometimes your life circumstances may seem like a dried up rock I don't know who I'm talking with right now you may be a young lady a single mother a single father maybe you've been left for dead maybe you're struggling maybe your circumstances is like a dried up rock but God can bring water from your dried up rock if you'll trust him he's that kind of a God and so he he's leading them he brought them water and he got to Mount Sinai and the first thing that God did this was a new nation every nation has what is called a constitution and God gave this new nation a constitution called the Ten Commandments. The first four tells us how to relate to the Lord God. You should have no other God before him. You shouldn't take his name in vain. Are you listening to me? You should make unto yourself any graven images. And the fourth one is, is one about relationship. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. You know, it's funny. The only one of the Ten Commandments that begins with the word remember is the one the world has chosen to forget God knew our environment would be polluted God knew our world would be messed up God knew that there will be the devil and, and materialism trying to replace him in our minds and he said listen as long as you keep the seventh day Sabbath you will forever remember that I am creator that I am in charge that's why the Sabbath is important to God and important to you now somebody said pastor pastor it's just a day why are you making a fuss over a day well you fuss when your wife failed to remember your birthday your wife has a problem when you don't remember her birthday your children have a problem when you forget their birthday and you have a problem when your children forget your birthday well if your birthday if a day is important to you, why not the one that God blessed and sanctified? Mm -hmm. Even in this country, there's a, what is it, August 17? Who, 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 who does that day celebrate? Mm -hmm. well, 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 what does July, what does August 6 celebrate? Come on, you fail your civic class. And if I ask you about July 4, you're going to tell me it's the independence of the USA. And you don't know your own independence day, huh? Mm? And, and for the people in St. Anne, huh? Mm? The day to, to commemorate whose birth? We'll share the shelter. Ah, are, you, are you listening? Listen to me carefully. He, he, that, in, in the US, I love Martin Luther King Jr. Nonviolent proponent and they fought to have a day set aside to commemorate his life well God bless the seventh day to commemorate his sovereign power his sovereign creatorship are you listening to me 
countries around the world have their independence day to commemorate their liberation from whichever country they were liberated from well God says listen the seventh day Sabbath is a sign of, of my creatorship it's a sign of my relationship between myself and my children and so beloved he told Israel I'll go feed you while you're in the wilderness. He said, every day I'm going to rain down for you bread from heaven. Gather enough for each day. If you gather more than enough, it's going to breed worms. It's going to stink. And they went out sometimes and gathered more than enough. And the stench was high. But God says, on the day before the Sabbath, I'm going to give you twice as much so that you won't go out there on the Sabbath day to gather any. And the Bible said they gathered twice as much and God preserved it. And so for Israel, the day before the Sabbath became known as the preparation day. That phrase came up in their journey through the wilderness. God taught them that every day before the Sabbath, they ought to prepare their stuff. They ought to bake their stuff. Are you listening to me? The Bible said... Exodus 16 26 six days you shall gather it but on the seventh day which is the Sabbath day there will be none God says I won't rain down any I want to teach you how sacred the Sabbath is I want to teach you how special the Sabbath is I want to teach you that you want to lay aside your cares and have communion with me oh beloved our world is filled with stress and tension and problems because we work every day some of us but God says I'm putting a break in the cycle uh, one two three four five six rest and on the seventh day a day you put aside your tools and your regular stuff to have fellowship and communion with the Lord God are you listening to me but they wouldn't listen and some went out there together they didn't find any and God said to them in verse 28 how long do you refuse to keep my commandments and my laws he said in Isaiah everyone who keeps the Sabbath from defiling it I'll bring them to my holy mountain and make them joyful watch this for in my house of prayer for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations now watch this, watch this. God says, if you keep my Sabbath from defiling it, I'll bring you to my house. Who, Lord? All nations. For my house shall be called a house of prayer for all nations. It means, therefore, as far as God is concerned, the seventh day Sabbath is for all nations. Oh, you ought to thank God tonight. Can I pause? Can I pause? I know sometime, beloved, maybe I should tell you, maybe I should tell you, I was never born as an Adventist. Well, nobody was anyway. I was brought up as a Methodist. All of my background and my family, my relatives, Methodist, Anglicans, and Baptists. Now, when I preach this, God does not send truth to condemn anybody. God does not send the Bible to embarrass anybody. And I'm not preaching this way to embarrass anybody. God wants us to come to him who is the sovereign creator. He wants to make us whole. He wants to bring us back into that relationship that Adam and Eve were in before sin entered. He wants our lives to be wholesome and meaningful and purposeful. Are you listening to me? Let me run fast. My time is running. So he said, remember. The Sabbath day to keep it holy. I, I, I used to live up in, I, I would stay with my grandfather sometimes. It, it's an old story I love to tell. My grandfather lived in a long lane. And so the shop, the country shop was way down at the end of the lane. And I could tell what my neighbor up the road from me was going to have for dinner. Because the little boy who was going to the shop, he, we never had money to buy stuff like you rich folk, you know. So you buy your stuff for the whole month. You buy your grocery for the whole week we, we'd go buy stuff only for that day or maybe two days but I could tell every evening what the neighbor up the road was going to have for dinner because the little boy is running past my grandfather's house and he's singing two pounds of flour one pound of salt fish remember the salt fish and he'd sing that from his house 
all the way down to the store. And the next evening, he'll be singing something else, huh? And so we could tell. Now God says, remember. Remember the day that I blessed. Remember the Sabbath day. It's not a conflict for God. It, it, it has meaning and purpose. Are you listening to me? So let me run fast. I, I have a lot to cover. He said six days we shall labor. But let me run. I need to get down to something. I, I'm sorry to run, but let me, let me run. In the Ten Commandments, the Sabbath is the only one who tells us, that tells us who the true God is. I told you the first four talks to us about our relationship with God. And the other six, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods, thou, thou shalt not tell lies. Hmm? All of these ten were intended by God for us to have a wonderful relationship. But I'm running very fast. I need to get down to the New Testament. Somebody said, somebody said, Pastor, don't you know that Yes, I, I agree with you, Pastor, but that was for the Old Testament. Luke 4 and verse 16. Remember I told you Jesus came as the living word? He came as the consummate obedient person. He said in Matthew chapter 5, 17 and onwards, Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I came not to do that, but to fulfill it. Now, now Luke 4, 16 says, And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and look at look at this and as his custom was if you look in the english dictionary look in oxford look in colbin look in collins look in any ordinary dictionary for that phrase as his custom was and even your dictionary will tell you it was his regular practice to go into the synagogue on the sabbath day it was his regular practice Mark 2.27, the Sabbath was made for man. For whom? Because man is God's priority. The Sabbath wasn't made for birds and bees and animals. It was made for M-A-N. Did it say Jews? Did it say Adventists? It was made for man. English man, European man, Africa. It was made for M-A-N. And I want to tell you this. He said, if you love him, keep his commandments but i have four minutes and i'm gonna i'm gonna run fast with something that's not on the screen but i'm gonna run fast with something for those four minutes i gave it to them earlier what does the gospels have to say about the sabbath what does matthew have to say what does the gospels have to say about the sabbath and if they can find it well let me find it for myself if they can find it quickly beloved listen listen to this listen to this matthew tells me in chapter 27 beginning at verse 62 now the next day that followed the day of the preparation remember i told you that phrase preparation day came up while they were traveling in the wilderness that god would provide for them before the sabbath and so that day became known as the preparation day the Bible said in verse 63 that, that Pilate went to, to, Joseph went to Pilate to beg for the body of Jesus. Joseph was a rich man who believed in Jesus. I'm glad that rich men believe on Jesus. I'm glad that rich men surrenders their heart to Jesus. Joseph was a multi-millionaire. Are you listening to me? He, he went to Pilate. But listen, the Pharisees also went to Pilate and they said, that deceiver said that he go rise again. Now, now, now uh, walk with me, son. We, we, we run into the text fast. Well, that screen is jumping up and down, so let me go back to the Bible. The Bible said in verse 1 of chapter 28, in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. So Pilate beg for the body of Jesus. The Pharisees and the scribes who didn't believe in Jesus went to Pilate to say, seal the tomb. Mary and the others, because it was the day before the Sabbath and sun was almost set, they prepared ointment and spices. Huh? And they went home and rested on the Sabbath day. 
according to the commandments. Matthew 28 verse 1 says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. One thing is clear here. I'm running. I have only a minute left. Sabbath and the first day of the week, according to this text, are two different days. From simple logic, the text says, In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, they came to the sepulchre. Are you listening to me? So he died on the day that they called the preparation day. That is the day before the Sabbath. The world called the day on which he died Good Friday. He rose the day after the Sabbath. The world called that day Easter Sunday. The Bible said he died the day before the Sabbath. The Bible said he rose the day after the Sabbath. And there's only one day that comes between crucifixion day and resurrection day. And it is called the Sabbath day or it is called S-A-T-U-R-D-A-Y. Are you listening to me? Well, that's what Matthew said. I have 60 seconds, 75 seconds to run to hear what Mark says. What, what, what does Mark say? Come on, son, quickly. What does Mark say? Well, well, let me run fast. If they won't follow me, they catch up with me. Mark, I'm going to Mark chapter 16. Huh? Well, let me read from verse 15. Mark 15 verse 42 says, And now when the even was come, watch this, watch this, watch this, because it was the preparation day, the day before the Sabbath. Matthew says it. Mark says it. Mark says, when the evening was come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph came to beg the body of Jesus, and Pilate marveled if he were already dead, and they brought fine linen, took him down, verse 46, wrapped him in clean linen, put him in a sepulcher, which was hewed out of a rock, and rolled a stone upon the door of the rock, they buried him. Oh, I can't pass. I know my time is gone, but I can't rush past it. Death and the grave had some conversation, they said. And, and death said, grave, if I kill Jesus, will you hold him? Grave said, if you kill him, I'll hold him. And on Friday, when Jesus said, Father, it is done into thy hands. I commend my spirit. Death had a party. I said, death. And the demons of darkness had a party. They took him down from the tomb. They wrapped him in linen. And they laid him in a borrowed grave. Are you listening to me? They placed a Roman seal on the grave. The demons of darkness came by the grave. And Friday night, death came back and said, Grave, do you still have him? And grave said, he's still here. Sabbath morning, death came back. Grave, do you still have him? He's still here. Midday service. The death came back. Grave is still here. And grave got upset. Grave said, go on and keep the Sabbath and leave me alone. But early on Sunday morning. I said early on Sunday morning. An angel left the courts of glory. Came down through the atmosphere. Passing all the planets. He's moving so fast. That somebody said, what is coming down into earth's atmosphere. He had to begin to back and he drew break at the tomb of Jesus the rocks ran, the stone rolled away and up from the grave he arose with a mighty triumph on his foes and he lives he lives, he lives he lives a serve, a risen savior hallelujah I'm done I'm done but hear the word tonight. Hear the word tonight. I said he lives. And the Bible said in Mark 16 and verse 1. And when the Sabbath was passed very early in the morning. Verse 2. Very early in the morning. The first day of the week. Are you listening to me? When the first day of the week comes. The Sabbath was just passed. Are you listening to me? 
So let's reason now. I know somebody said God didn't give them names. Sure, the only one that God gave a name to was the seventh day. He called it the Sabbath day. He called all the other first day, second day, third day. But mankind named the first day in honor of sun worship. It became sun's day. And I hold the whole world. We know Sunday is the first day. And Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday we call Good Friday. That's the day on which he dropped his head in the hall of his chest and died. That's the day before the Sabbath. He rested in the tomb on the Sabbath. He rose from the dead on the first day. And the argument is settled. Let this be the settlement of the argument. The Bible is clear that when the first day comes, Sabbath is already passed. The Bible is clear that on the crucifixion day, it is the day before the Sabbath. Oh, I know tonight, some may be hearing it for the first time, but I tell you, God does not send truth to condemn, but you shall know the truth. And the truth shall set you free. And by the grace of God I ask you. Put your hand in the hands of the man. Whose hands were nailed on the cross for you. He died because you are the love of his life. He died to save you because you are the love of his life. I'm done but, but there's something else that just jumped in my mind. And I can't resist it. Isaiah said. From one Sabbath, mm, Lord have mercy, forgive me, forgive me, forgive me. But I can't rush past. I can't rush past it. I can't rush past it. It's the creme de la creme. It, it's Isaiah said, "Listen, he was wounded for our transgressions." He was bruised for our iniquities. Isaiah said the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we are healed. But the same Isaiah said he wouldn't end the book without giving you something to shout about. He said sin will not have the last word. The devil won't have the last word. A polluted earth like this won't last forever. I hear Isaiah said in Isaiah 66 and verse 22. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make the future for as the new heavens and the new earth this earth will not last forever this earth can last forever thank God he's making a new heaven and a new earth he said he said he said it for as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me said the Lord so shall your seed and your name remain and it shall come to pass that from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh Come to worship before me. Do you want to go? I want to be there in a land where the air will be clean. I want to be there where there will be no prostate cancer, no breast cancer, no cervical cancer, no, no liver cancer. I want to be there where there will be no old age, no aches and pain, no high blood pressure. I want to be there. No violence, no hospital, no jail cell. And it shall come to pass that from one Sabbath to another. For the earth shall be filled with the glory of God. There will be no devil. And the sovereign God who has made us the love of his life. Will say come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you. For you are the love of my life. He loves you. Do you love him? He said if you love him you ought to keep his commandments. I'm done. I'm done. My time is gone. And they're going to sing a song for us and we'll be home. But oh tonight I ask you. You ought to make him the love of your life. For he has made you his number one priority. He has made you the love of his life. He has made you his number one priority. And if your life is broken, the best thing you can do is to give it to Jesus. Fill out that decision card tonight. Fill out that decision card. Hamela Siblis. 
Annalie Clayton, Cassandra Horton Clark, Ariel, Antoinette Ibarra, Christine Edwards. We've gotten your prayer request. That's how I'm calling your name. I'm calling your name because you have written in the prayer request. Winston Wilson and Jenny Huffington and Frederica Smith and Anne Ramsey, Una Richards, Maxine Finnegan. Yes, I've gotten your prayer request. Donovan Morgan and Angela Campbell and Sonia Yap and Stephen. We've gotten your prayer request. Fill out the card. Fill out that decision card tonight. Fill out that decision card tonight. He has made you his priority. You ought to make him the love of your life. He has made you his priority. That's why he made the Sabbath. So you can have fellowship. So you can have communion with him. He blessed the seventh day. He sanctified it. He's made you his priority. Given you a day for fellowship and communion with him. A day for rest. A day to lay down the cares. And focus entirely on God. I worship every day. But on the seventh day, it is dedicated, given completely for fellowship with God, for communion with God, for sharing the word of God. Yes, you know nothing until you know the love of God. I beseech you tonight, right where you are, right where you are, there's a pastor, there's an elder right there. In the Cayman Islands, in the Bahamas Islands, in Freeport, in Nassau, in the Berry Islands, in Abaco, in Trinidad and Tobago, in Trinidad, in Tobago, in Barbados, in Canada, in Toronto, in Saskatchewan, in Alberta, in New Jersey, in New York, and Massachusetts, across the U.S., in Kuwait, in Africa, make that decision. Scan that QR code. Scan on that QR code. Click on that decision link. Fill out that card. Fill out that card tonight. Make a decision. Make a decision to surrender your life to God. Make that decision to put your life in the hands of God. He said repent. Repent and be baptized. He said surrender. He loves you. He's made you his number one priority. He has made you sir. You sir. I may not be God's first voice to you. But I could be God's last voice to you. Maybe you have been hearing the call of God. Maybe you have been contemplating baptism for a long time. Maybe you have been contemplating surrendering. Tomorrow is going to be a baptism right in your country, right in your community. Tomorrow is going to be a baptism. And it doesn't matter what the devil has done to you. The God who made the world in six days. The God who blessed the seventh day. The God who sanctified it. This God is able to make something beautiful of your life. I'm done. I'm done. Our Father and our God. What a joy it is to know that you are sovereign creator. That you made us in your likeness after your image. God, we, we don't know what it looked like for Adam and Eve, but 
But we know that because of your redemptive grace, there's going to be a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwell and we'll behold you face to face. Tonight, Lord, there are people around the world, there are folk right now in standing by the street corner looking at the screen there are screens now god even in our own bar someplace there are screens in sunderland and berry islands and greenvale and waterworks sandstone Al alma jerusalem heights grange there are screens god in sections of spanish town in central jamaica there are screens in east jamaica there are screens in north jamaica there are screens in barbados there are screens all over the place because you're giving the wind a mighty voice the everlasting gospel is calling us to worship the one true god who made the world we've heard your voice tonight we surrender our lives afresh I pray God now for struggling people. Some are hearing it for the first time. Help them to go home tonight and read the word again for themselves. Watch over us while we sleep. Bring us back tomorrow. Tomorrow, God, is going to be a day of victory. Tomorrow is going to be a day of transformation. There's going to be baptism taking place across the different countries. Tonight, Lord, somebody is gaining the victory. Tonight, God, there's a young man right now. There's a young lady right now. Tonight, God, there's a businessman who's been resisting baptism. But now, God, hallelujah. He's saying, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. Yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. Take us home now. The glory of your name bring us back in the morning to worship you in the beauty of holiness.